All right, so for this next one, this next example with some of the past paper questions, I want to look at some with Pythagoras' theorem and the trig ratios. So if you realize how the diagram is going to be now, it's just one, it's not one single triangle. You're going to have more than one triangle here, if you notice. And in these triangles, they will be joined. Because of splitting the 90, I really have two right angles because we already, already see before. 90 and 90 is 180. So once I have a 90 on one side and as a straight line the next side going to be a 90 as well the first part i want x so again x belongs to this triangle on the right hand side here because i can't use both triangles at the same time but what you notice about this triangle i have two sides i want to find the third side so that is pythagoras we have no angles in it so pythagoras's theorem states that the hypotenuse squared will be the base squared plus the height squared so the hypotenuse in this case hypotenuse base height so the hypotenuse squared will be x squared the base squared is 8 squared plus 6 squared that's 64 plus 36 so x squared is 100 but I don't want x squared I want x so x will be square root of 100 so my answer for x is 10 meters so I get x is 10 meters same idea for the next one I want to find theta theta belongs to the triangle on the left so I have nothing to really do with the triangle on the right now using the triangle on the left I want to find an angle they give me two sides so I'm going to use one of my trig ratios so with respect to the angle I'm going to label the sides so this is the opposite side opposite the 90 is always the hypotenuse this is the adjacent so let me see they give me both the opposites and the hypotenuse so that means I have to use sine theta however they want an angle and as we have seen before, once they want an angle, same ratio, but we can't use sine. We have to use the inverse of sine, sine inverse, same ratio though. Remember, they're not giving you this formula in the formula sheet. They're just giving you this formula. So it'll be sine inverse. Opposite side is 6 over 12. I'm going to work that out. A nice, neat 30 degrees. I want to look at the next one with the bearings one time and incorporate... It's into this question here. Let's zoom out a little bit. So in this question, it's a bearings question. The diagram below again, they say not drawn to scale, meaning I can't just take a ruler and measure it. Obviously, this is not 16 kilometers, so I can't just measure off the angles. The journey of a ship which sailed from port K to port L, and again, they form a right angle triangle there. And port L is 28 kilometers to the east, so they give you everything in the diagram already. I just have to calculate correct the three significant figures so you see they round it off the distance KL so the distance from KTL and again this is a right angle triangle here so I'm going to use Pythagoras' theorem they give me two sides I want to find the third side so however you want to do it whatever you want to call if I want to call this base and call this height KL squared will be 16 squared plus 28 squared and again, we could work that out. Let me just get the handy calculator here. So again, you need to know how to use your calculator. So 16, I have my squared button already built in there. 16, I have my squared button already built in. So I get in 256. Plus 28 squared. Again, you can do all this in one step. Again, the better you know how to use your calculator, the easier. So if I want to do it in one step, I would have just put in 16 squared plus 28 squared. I wouldn't get the individual pieces, but I get what you get when this add up anyway, which is 1,040. And that's KL squared. I don't want KL squared. I want to just KL, which will be the square root, 1,040. So I just press square root there now. And I get my answer, 32.249, but they said three significant figures. So 32.2 kilometers would be the distance from here to here the next part is they want the bearing of port l from port k so which point we at we went from k to l or l to k so from k means that at k they already have the line from a north line that's my zero degrees and i want to turn until i hit the line with l so i want this big angle here and if you notice it's not one angle i want it's two angles Straight north, straight east, because they tell me it went straight east here in that first part. So this is a 90 degrees angle, if you remember your cardinal direction. So what I really need to figure out is this angle here. And then I can add up the 90 to that to get the whole bearing. So you've seen it's not a one answer thing. 
we need to get this and then we add it to the 90. How we're going to get this angle though, theta? It's inside the right angle triangle, so I could use one of the trig ratios. So this is opposite the angle. This is the hypotenuse. This is adjacent to the angle. So I have opposite and hypotenuse, sorry, adjacent. I'm mixing up my H there with the one we used from before. So opposite and adjacent, which is tan. However, if I want to use it to the 2.2 and it correct, I could use that. It's just a little bit safer sometimes to use what they give you, just in case I made a mistake with this one. However, in some questions, you have no choice but to use the answer you get, right? So you'll have to trust that it's correct. Once it's correct, though, you could use any one. I'm sticking with these two, though, opposite and adjacent again will be tan theta is opposite over adjacent if you double check the formula that they give in any formula sheet. Just like before, though, this is not a length we're trying to find they wanted an angle and once you have to find an angle is always the inverse you would need so it'll be tan inverse and i just stick in my values opposite is 16 adjacent is 28 when i stick that in my calculator because that's what the calculator going to be for second function tan inverse to get my tan inverse open my bracket 16 divided by 28 close my bracket 29.74 degrees but since we're already rounding off stuff we'll put it as 29.7 for now just to show you so in the last part remember i said the bearing was in one angle it's both of those so for the last part to get the bearing it'll be 90 degrees plus 29.7 which is roughly 30 so i'm gonna get 119.7 degrees However, this is not the three significant figures, so when I round it off, I still get in to the nearest whole number, which is 120 degrees. All right, so again, I told you angles normally round off to the nearest whole number, lengths to one decimal place, but they would state, even though they say three significant figures, it still worked out to the nearest whole number for angles and one decimal place.